Today is brought to you by SeatGeek. For all your ticketed events, from sporting to concert outings, SeatGeek has you covered. They even conveniently color-coded each ticket on their website from amazing to worse, so you can easily know which are the best deals. SeatGeek, the smart way to buy. Save $20 off your next ticket purchase. Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? I'm your host, Brandon Gato, also known as The Big Cat. Thank you, God, for tuning in for another episode of Keep Pound on the Score TV. My cool cats, get your paws in there if you're rocking with The Big Cat. Today, we're talking about episode four of Carolina Panthers All or Nothing. But first, I got one quick question. Do you love the Carolina Panthers like I love the Carolina Panthers? Yes, no, maybe. Do you love the Carolina Panthers like I love the Panthers? If you're looking up like I love the Panthers, give me that. Give me that. We're going to be talking about episode four, headed to Washington. Let's get into it. Episode four drops you off with the Thomas Davis family. Now, he's been suspended for PEP uh, supplementation that were banned by the league. Um, he was returning from an injury. He said that he always pretty much used a supplement. But for whatever reason, this year, um, they said it was banned. So he's returning for the Washington game. He's hyped up inside of him and his family are playing Uno. He's ready to get back on the field. Next, he's not the only guy ready to return. Greg Olson's ready to return. He's hyped up. Cam Newton, quote, unquote, says... I think we got the band back together. So there's a lot of excitement between him, Thomas Davis, the guys already produced, headed to Washington, a team that we should have easily beat. But you know how things went. One of the biggest highlights of episode four was when Luke and Cam, they're calling Josh Norman, and he's in the weight room, and they're having a friendly conversation. And uh, they, uh, Josh Norman asked, hey, is Greg Olson playing? And then Luke Kigley said, uh, no, he's not playing. <laughs> so obviously you can't do that, you know what I mean? So Cam just pretty much looks at Luke. It was really, really hilarious. And then back and forth, Josh Norman and Cam. Cam says, if I catch you in the open, I'm going to truck you. Josh Norman's like, I'm going to go for your legs. So that just kind of captured the lighthearted moment. I know a lot of you guys probably think that, oh, man, certain teams hate other teams, and I'm pretty sure they do. But some, certain players on other teams, even if they played with you before, they remain best friends. And they did a good job to capture the friendship and the camaraderie amongst a fellow teammate, a former fellow teammate. Next, episode four drops you off into Landover Field, where I used to stay at, Landover, Maryland. They drop you into Landover Field <laughs> right on there, and you get to see the Carolina Panthers' mindset when it comes to playing the Redskins. Right off back, you see DJ Moore struggles, a guy who played for the University of Maryland right up the street at College Park. He struggles in what is somewhat of a homecoming for him. Um, he's kind of getting his head down. Um, he fumbles on, on special teams. He also fumbled as a wide receiver, courtesy of Josh Norman knocking the ball out of his hand. He's real emotional, real head kind of down. It's not the way he wanted to return, sort of a homecoming. After a slow start for the entire team, it was too much of a lead to overcome. 17, 14 point lead, they were down by. They came back late in the fourth quarter, drove down the field, ran out of time, man, just ran out of time. But value effort, they didn't roll over when they could have got really blown the hell out. The guys put together, Cam Newton put together. North Turner finally got the put in park, I mean, put in drive and got it out of park, but it was too late. After a devastating loss, episode four kind of brings you another lighthearted moment. Um, Steve Smith is invited to practice and he calls Cam Newton over. He's standing right next to DJ Moore. Now, mind you, Steve Smith has nothing but the highest praise. He said they haven't been able to replace him until they drafted DJ Moore. So he calls Cam Newton over and he's Cam. Look at my phone, man. I got DJ Moore on my fantasy football team, but I also got John Brown. Do you think I should sit John Brown? And then Cam Newton's like, nah, nah, I think you should start John Brown. I don't know about the DJ Moore kid. And then Steve Smith's like, yeah, I think he's not that good. <laughs> it was just real lighthearted, real funny, man. Obviously, they're joshing him. They're trying to get him motivated and stuff like that. But Steve Smith, the fucking goat, man, right there. And DJ Moore just kind of laughing it off, shrugging it off. You know it bothered him. You know it bothered him the way he played. But I love the fact that, you know, you got a legend that believes in you to the point to where he's willing to push your buttons, even push your buttons to get you motivated. The next thing you find out is... One of his rookie pranks is to go to the store and get everybody in the, in the damn facility snacks, okay? <laughs> so, in his shopping cart, he had part tarts, gushers, honey buns, ho hos Twinkies. <laughs> he even had dog biscuits. <laughs> he even had dog biscuits in his car. So, I really, really like that part of the episode. It shows a lighthearted moment, but it also shows you that, you know, the team is still a team, even in devastation. The team continues to prepare for the Philadelphia Eagle. 
it kind of gives you a glimpse into Cam Newton's style. It kind of gives you a glimpse into his future. As he's uh, he has a personal football designer, a guy who makes his uniform, a guy who makes his tuxedo. He even makes a statement that I don't wear one suit more than one time. So, and it kind of show you a little bit of who he is, man. A lot of people make fun of him for having that pizzazz, that kind of style, but it's actually innovative. He's actually an entrepreneur. This could be his um, his own clothing line after football. So, kudos to him. It shows you a little bit about him as a fashion designer and potential next career. Last but not least, episode four concludes by dropping you into the Philadelphia game. We all know what happened. Slow start. The guys can get it out of park once again after a Philadelphia game. 0-17 headed to the fourth quarter. I don't think anybody was able to come back from that ever. But these guys did. They fought like hell. The same kind of effort they put into the Washington Redskins game where they were down. They ran out of time late. But this time, there was no running out of time. Those guys fought to the end. Cam Newton showed to you why he was a leader. But in that win, we also suffer a loss. Tune in next time to find out what I mean. I'm your host, the that got to also know the Big Cat. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you get in the notification bell. Get in the comment section. I want to hear from you guys. What was your biggest takeaway for episode four? I personally like Thomas Davis returning out there laying folks out. Also like DJ Moore being picked on by Steve Smith. Pretty funny. Get in the comment section. I want to hear from you guys. Let's get up out of here, y'all. Let the church say.